What is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we have ourselves the most exciting projector review to date and that would be the BenQ GS50. This is a portable battery powered 1080p projector that has a replaceable built in Android system which is pretty awesome for future proofing. A 2.1 sound system by Travolo and if you guys don't know Travolo it's actually a sub brand of BenQ and we have reviewed one of their speakers in the past and they do make some very nice sounding speakers. So it's pretty awesome to see it built in into this little tiny package. Now you may notice that there are some flaps all over the place and the reason is is that this projector is actually splash proof so you can go ahead and use it outdoors and have a good time without worrying too much about some rogue water or a tiny bit of rain before you go ahead and cover it. So first of all we have system lock so we can stop it from being turned on by accident for example as well as disabling the buttons. The USB runs at 1.5 amps, the HDMI, HDCP 2.2 and yes it runs at 4K 60fps and the USB Type-C display port does run at 1080p 60fps. It's a very nice touch that it tells you the details right under the ports themselves. Yes, you can in fact power the projector using the Type-C port, which is very handy. However, if you are planning to do so, make sure you get yourself a nice PV power bank, as it does require 15 volts at 3 amps. As for the output, it will do 15 volts at 1.5 amps. However, when it comes to the USB here, it's actually not connected to the external Android system as the micro USB cable here is only to power the stick itself. Instead, the USB port here is actually meant for the internal video player system. It plays video, audio, and photos. There's two different systems, which is the main projector system that includes, again, the built-in player, and the second system is the external one right on top. Now, having a system like this, of course, has its pros and cons, but it's mostly pros as you can go ahead and upgrade it sometime in the future, and at the same time, it leaves you room with an extra HDMI, just in case if you want to use it. Now, this is what it looks like on the inside. It's basically an HDMI and a micro USB port for power, and the existing room here is decent. However, it might still be limiting depending on what kind of device you plan to install here. So yes, technically, you could install a Raspberry Pi or a small Windows stick. However, you may run into some problems such as space constraints, as well as the included cable, which is a micro USB to micro USB right angle, which of course, not all systems may have a micro USB, since nowadays everything is moving to type C. So it would have been nice to see an included cable that has a type C port on the other end, just for future proofing. But that's all right, as the system included here is pretty good. It has Chromecast built in Android, and it's very nicely integrated in the remote. So let's talk about that. And if you guys are interested, we can take a look at some options and see if we can actually install a Windows stick or a Raspberry Pi inside this projector, which would make for a cool video. Now, when it comes to the remote, we have a couple different things. First of all, this is kind of a two-in-one, three-in-one cap of remote. It's got a built-in microphone. It's got infrared to control the projector, as well as Bluetooth connectivity to connect and pair to the external system, which in our case is the Android stick. All packed into this very nice body, which feels pretty good to use. The button layout is nice, and everything is as it should be. Autofocus, auto keystone, the built-in USB player, input source, prime video, navigation, speaker volume, Google Now, the dedicated projector menu, as well as the Android controls. So you pretty much have everything that you need. So with that said, let's go ahead and set up and show you guys what it's all about. All right, so here we are set up with the projector about 105 inches away. We are currently getting 100 inches worth of screen and we are projecting on a white wall and things are looking pretty good. Now we already know the projector heater is 1080p. It has 500 ANSI lumens, which is pretty good for the size. And yes, this is indeed a laser projector. So the image quality is very nice and clear, but we're also getting a nice projection height. So we are currently just set up on a normal height table and it's giving us a very nice viewing height from the ground. Now let's kick things off by doing the image quality and focus testing. Starting by actually going ahead and pressing the autofocus button on the remote and having it do the automatic focus adjustments. Now you'll notice when running the autofocus function that the little menu here actually comes up for a couple seconds and allows you to kind of fine tune it using the remote and make sure that everything is set as it should be. So looking at the center here, we can see that things do look sharp. However, they are not tack sharp. And we can tell that by looking at the small text that is right here. And we can take a look at the lines from the bottom moving upwards and seeing what things look like. Overall, not bad at all. Now as for the corn test, things do look pretty good. The small text here is not that visible, but that's all right, it's just way too small. You won't read it anyways. And every corner here has a nice clean cut, so there isn't a whole lot of blooming or some kind of cut edges. Uh, things overall look pretty good. And here's another quick image sample of what things look like up close as we slowly back up. And uh, yeah. It does look pretty fantastic. It looks very clean, very nice. Can't really complain about it. And here's a simple white image and we can see that things look very uniform. So there isn't any major noticeable vignetting, which is great. Overall, this does pass the image and focus test. 
As for screen tearing and frame rates, the projector here does a fantastic job as well. There's no tearing, ghosting is at a minimal, and overall things look very good when in motion. Now what you're looking at here is a standard Android TV interface. We got the app section on top and everything on the bottom is called a channel. And basically these are usually different streaming apps and we can see that we have YouTube here and different recommendations that are showing up right on the home screen, which is pretty useful. And we can just go ahead and search something up real quick here and it will just simply read off what I'm saying, which is pretty cool. If you wanna stay quiet, you can go ahead and type something or just simply jump into the settings menu right over here, which is also accessible by a dedicated button on the remote. Now, jumping into the app section, we can see that we do indeed have a full-fledged Google Play Store, which is fantastic. For pre-installed apps, we've got Prime Video, Famuland, which we'll take a look at in just a bit. It's basically a kid's app that's catered by BenQ, Wireless Projection, YouTube, the built-in mini app manager, Crunchyroll, Droid Settings, Live Channels, and when you do go ahead and set up the projector, it will ask you if you want to go ahead and install Google Duo. And for the rest of the apps, you can see what I have installed. I have things like Tubi, I have Moonlight, PPSPP, RetroArch, and Steam Link, because why not? Now a quick look at the app manager, we can see that it kind of takes a while to boot up, about 5 seconds or so, and inside you'll find a mini app store. You'll find Aptoid and Firefox, and that's it. Now although it may look like something that's not fully fledged, which it kind of is, I believe the main reason they have this app is actually to go ahead and install Aptoid in areas where you actually have no access to Google Play Store. And right down there you'll find the channel section, and basically this lets you kind of set some favorites for apps that you have installed yourself, and we can go ahead and just select whatever we want, and if we go back into the home screen, you can see it show up right down here with all the apps that we have selected. Other than that, we do have Famuland, which is again, an app for kids made by BenQ to kind of let you curate and control what your kids watch. It's a very nice app if you have kids, so you can kind of just throw this on and you'll have nice filtered content for your kids to watch safely. You can do things like limit screen time, you can pair up your device, and you can pick and choose from four different languages. And again, most of the stuff is being pulled from YouTube. So now let's go ahead and take a quick look at the Android settings. Again, this menu will come up, and it will have network settings for your Wi-Fi, and yes, it does have dual band Wi-Fi. It will have your account, it will have the app section, and inside you can go ahead and uninstall, clear cache, and whatnot. Under device preferences, you'll have the standard stuff, like date, language, keyboard. And finally, for remote and accessories, is basically the Bluetooth section. And yes, we currently have the remote connected right there. We also have my Bluetooth keyboard, as well as an Xbox Series X wireless controller, which is very nice to have, as some games can actually make use of it. And finally, when it comes to the all projector settings, this is just a shortcut to bring up the projector menu, which again has its own dedicated button on the remote. Now the projector menu here is actually pretty fantastic. It's very easy to use, very intuitive. It's got a whole lot of function and a whole lot of control. First off at the top right, we have our battery status. It's currently at 100% and it is charging. Right here, we have the brightness and this is actually not the backlight. This is just a kind of a quick brightness slider to uh, kind of boost things up a bit if your content is too dark. Usually you want to keep it around 50. However, if you got any content that's just too dark, you can go ahead and quickly bump it up with a dedicated slider just for that, which is again, very handy. And it's nice that they have thought of it. Next up, we have the picture mode. We can see that we have a couple different options. Now as for game mode, I did go ahead and do some response time testing. So we'll talk about that in just a bit. And as for the settings here, my favorite one has to be cinema or game mode. They kind of seem to be the best balanced options. Again, you can go ahead and play around with that. Then we have the sound mode and basically this is where you can go ahead and set up your sound. We have a couple different presets. They all sound great. Again, all thanks to the 2.1 sound system by Travolo. In the past, I have reviewed one of their speakers as well as one of their monitors that does include the Travolo system, producing some very nice crisp audio quality out of a small system. It was just awesome to see it included in this package. Next up, we have picture mode. And again, this is the presets. And this is where you can go ahead and dial in your settings. And yes, you can actually customize each of the different preset settings, which is very handy as it lets you have full control and have a bunch of custom presets. Next up, we have the power mode. And this is where you can go ahead and kind of save some battery life. Again, it will automatically turn on to low power mode when you have the power unplugged. And even with the low power mode, the projector here does produce some very nice image quality. It's decent enough in brightness and it's actually still brighter than a whole lot of projectors that we have reviewed in the past, as well as ones we're going to be reviewing very soon. What you're looking at here is the Emotion H1, and this thing is about 289 US dollars. That also comes with built-in Android, but it is at 250 nits. And when that thing is unplugged, you can't actually control how much brightness output you can get. It will automatically drop the brightness by about 50%, to the point where my light meter does not even pick it up. However, with the BenQ, just for reference numbers, I was getting about 90 lux at 100 inches. And at eco mode, I was getting 75. And finally, at low power, I was getting 50. As for the Emotion H1, I was roughly getting about 35 at max power and about one lux when unplugged, to the point where it's almost kind of not useful at 100 inches. And you have to really push in and shrink the size to get a decent experience. 
So you can definitely use all three different power levels and see what suits you. Of course, most of you are going to want max brightness for the best quality. However, if you are running on battery life and you want to get the most out of your projector, setting it on low power mode, playing YouTube on Wi-Fi 5 GHz with a 1080p video will get you 2.5 hours, which lines up perfectly with what they claim on the box. For reference, the H1 was getting an hour and a half, and that's again with a much inferior image quality since the brightness levels dropped dramatically. And here's the kind of difference you could expect when comparing the different power levels side by side from the BenQ itself. Then we have eye protection and this is kind of a two-in-one. One of them is going to be an ambient light sensor, which automatically adjusts the brightness according to your environment, which again will save you some battery life. And the other one is the auto eye protection, which will actually turn off the lens when someone actually passes by it and uh, kind of prevents you from blinding yourself. Then we have parental control. You can go ahead and set up a password and control what kind of content you have going. We have installation. As for the image correction, we have two different options. We have Keystone and Corner Fit, which is very handy if you have an awkward setting. So you can go ahead and select the different corners and just kind of pull them forward and backwards until you have a perfectly set image. Again, something that's not so perfect. We got test pattern and that just kind of gives you a little grid to kind of make sure everything looks great. Then we have HDMI settings and this is kind of an important one that may save you some battery life. Now by default this is actually set to auto. For the HTV option which is the external Android stick, by default it is set to enhanced and I personally have set it to standard. Setting it to standard kind of forces it to 1080p 60fps. As for enhanced, we'll actually force the Android system to run at 4k 60fps which will suck up a little bit more power but it should be fine either way. Lastly, in the system settings, we have the language, system update, system information, projector information, and all the important stuff like Android version, which is 9.0, the RAM, which currently says one gigabyte. However, in ADA 64, it says two gigabytes, as well as the internal storage, which combined turns into 16 gigabytes. Finally, inside the projector information, we have the serial number, the firmware version, the total laser lamp usage, which is currently nine hours, 15 minutes, and what kind of picture mode and settings that you're currently set to, including your resolution. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about response times, give you guys some audio samples, and some video samples. And then we can go ahead and conclude this video. Now when it comes to gaming, I'm happy to say that response times here are decent enough to play some casual games such as Mario Kart. The response times are around 45 milliseconds across the board. And so the conclusion, should you get the GS50 for 800 US dollars as your first portable projector? Well if image quality and sound quality and convenience factors are a must, then this thing has definitely got you. It's got the image quality, the brightness, the convenient factors of autofocus and auto cue tone, the swappable Android system. It's rugged, it's flash resistant, and it's got an awesome pair of speakers with a dedicated subwoofer right in the back. It sounds great, it's plenty loud, 
and most importantly, it eliminates the need for an external pair of speakers, as most of these portable projectors nowadays, they don't sound all that great. And the whole point of portable projectors is the battery, and the battery here is good enough to watch a two and a half hour long movie, which is pretty good. And to expand on it further is that yes, you can actually charge the battery here while running the projector, unlike the Emotion H1, which only charges when it's off, which is not very convenient. Even if you leave it overnight while it's on, it's not going to charge a single percent, which is quite unfortunate. However, with the BenQ, you can charge it while using it, but also being able to power it through the Type-C port using a power bank, which is fantastic. And there's actually one killer feature that I haven't talked about, and that would be the actual focus distance of the lens that's inside of here. You can literally focus right here, and you'll have a tiny image that is perfectly in focus, and it's absolutely insane. Now, why is that important? Well, of course, this is not going to be useful. However, if you're looking to actually use it as a little monitor or a 32-inch screen, then you can definitely just go ahead and project it like so, and you'll get yourself a very awesome, bright, vivid, and very sharp 32-inch display right in front of you, and it's absolutely fantastic. And once again, we could literally focus it to the size of a credit card and it will still be perfectly in focus. And I think that is absolutely awesome. So yeah, the projector here is pretty great, but it's also pretty expensive. So does it have any real flaws or issues? Well, to be honest, my only real problem with this projector is the actual external system that they have. It's very cool being able to actually swap it out. However, it's also kind of a downfall and you'll require to do extra work if you want to actually get anything going the way you want it, especially if you are a power user which is the type of person that likes to get extra storage, load it up with a bunch of apps and movies, and just really customize the software to their liking. Again, as the USB here is not actually directly linked to the Android system, so there's no real easy way to transfer files here quickly, and your only options would have to be wireless transfer using something like a file manager. So in my opinion, once again, that's really my only problem with this thing, which we will actually address in a future video and see what kind of things we can install. Maybe we'll go ahead and install a Raspberry Pi or some kind of Windows stick and see what kind of cool things we could do here. Other than that, if I have to nitpick, the actual door here does not close fully. Although it has a gasket, it doesn't fully close, so it kind of leaves a little bit of gap here. And the fact that we have no protection for the lens itself, other than the included carrying case. Which, by the way, is fantastic. It's fully padded on all sides, and it's honestly a really nice addition to the entire system. We do have this little carrying handle, and we can just simply drop it in here, and throw all the extra cables and wires and extension cords right in there, and have ourselves a good time. And with that being said, that is all for this video. So do I recommend the GS50? Well, if you can afford it and it fits your needs, then this thing is absolutely awesome. Again, the only real issue that I have here is again, the external system, not being able to expand it with an SD card or a USB stick. So with that said, stick around for a future video where we go ahead and mod this thing and make it even more awesome. So yes, I do recommend this thing. It absolutely gets my command to stamp up approval. And yeah, that is all for this video. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.